The AUC Aegon AG275QXL is a odd monitor in many ways. First off, it's a League of Legends branded monitor. Everywhere you look, you can see League of Legends plastered all over it, and that's because AOC is partnered up with Riot Games. Now, the monitor has a 1440p resolution, runs 170Hz refresh rate, an IPS panel at 27-inch form factor, with HDR400, AMD FreeSync, and also NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility. Now, in this review, you can see if it's actually worth its price tag, because it can be found for roughly £400 in the UK, and around $450 in the US. So with that in mind, let me talk about its display inputs, and here the monitor runs 1440p natively at 165Hz, but has got a factory 100 170 hertz overclock. Now for you to achieve this resolution and refresh rate, you're going to have to run over DisplayPort. In my case, I have no problems outputting this resolution and refresh rate. However, if you have an HDMI input, so for example, you have a laptop, you'll be capped at 144 hertz. Now, normally I would comment and say this is something that you should be looking out for, but League of Legends players out there will know that even pros limit their 240 hertz monitors down to 144 hertz because Riot Games doesn't seem to properly support over 144 hertz. Quite frankly, looking at differences between 144 hertz and 165 or 170 hertz will be pretty negligible for most consumers. So it's just something I just want to highlight and just kind of make you aware about, but it's not exactly a negative factor while going into the review of this monitor. Now no matter what connection you're using you'll be interested to know about its input lag and here no matter what sort of game you're playing it is a very important factor and here I can safely say that I'm very impressed with this AOC monitor in fact it's the lowest that I've tested so far at 2.3 milliseconds and note that is with the low input lag mode enabled. If you were to disable it it goes down to 3.5 milliseconds which is still a very impressive figure although I would definitely suggest running low input lag modes at all times. Frankly, I don't really understand why AOC provide the option of enabling or disabling this mode because a lot of users will definitely want to run it enabled because you can see for yourself that it is a positive benefit of having it enabled. Now, while its input lag is very impressive, what about when it comes to its response time? So you should know that there's a few different overdrive levels to choose from. You've got off, weak, medium, and strong, and then boost. Now, the boost mode is the same as running MBR in terms of its maximum level, whereby it'll cap the brightness and lock it at around 100 nits, which I think is a little bit dim for most people but nevertheless it's going to reduce all the motion blur that's available. If you don't want to use the boost mode you can adjust the different level increments via the MBR mode and run the overdrive at the strong or for example the medium setting. Now on that note here the strongest overdrive does result in a quite a bit of inverse ghosting. If you're playing a game such as League of Legends or a graphically intense game such as Destiny 2 you're going to notice those purple trailing that occurs. As a result, you're probably going to want to dial it down to the medium setting. And this will, of course, infect the overall response time monitor, which we'll touch upon very shortly. If, however, you're playing a non-graphically intense game, such as Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which looks a bit like a potato, I had no problems whatsoever in terms of playing the game in its maximum overdrive mode. And as such, I got away with the little bit of inverse ghosting that was occurring in a game like Counter-Strike. Ultimately, it really depends in terms of the game you're playing. And if you're looking at this monitor for League of Legends, then you're probably going to want to run it in terms of its medium overdrive mode. So with that in mind, let's get into the raw numbers. Now on the screen right now, you'll be able to see the figure with the off overdrive, and you can see it's stupendously low at an average initial time, in other words, the average D to G, at 4.61 milliseconds. If we were to go to the weak mode, it goes down to 3.93. If you go to down to the medium mode, it's 3.19, which is obviously the most appropriate mode for League of Legends players. And if you're playing a game like Counter-Strike, where you can see there's a lot of red in terms of the RGB overshoot but here the average initial time drops down to 2.74 millisecond which is absolutely stupendously good. So with all of that in mind if you're going to be playing League of Legends you're probably going to want to enable adaptive sync whereby here the monitor does have AMD FreeSync support and also has got G-Sync compatibility and is certified. No, this is not to be confused with a G-Sync module monitor, which would have ramped up the price because its VRR range doesn't stem from 1 to all the way to 170 hertz, rather goes from 48 hertz up to 170 hertz. And as a result, you do have a little bit of, well, stuttering when it comes to its lower frames. I did notice this on Nvidia Pendulum's demo and also Destiny 2. Nevertheless here, when connected over to my RTX 3080 over DisplayPort, I had noticed black screen issues or flickering. 
Now on the subject of Destiny 2, this monitor does also have HDR support and here I was able to simultaneously run HDR with Nvidia G-Sync enabled at 170Hz and 1440p, of course when connected over to my DisplayPort cable because I was able to achieve the max resolution and refresh rate. And I can safely say here that I had a tear-free gaming experience and no sort of issues. Now this brings me on to its HDR support. Now it has HDR 400 which is not exactly that great and even though it does surpass the 400 nit standard by quite a bit, it's not exactly going to give you that sort of lifelike HDR image and as such you're going to be wanting to look for HDR 600 certified monitors or above. Nevertheless the overall colour accuracy that the monitor does produce over HDR was pretty impressive and does give for a good likened experience which might be very useful for those people who are running a console. Now I should note here but for League of Legends you do not have any sort of HDR support so it's slightly strange to see HDR supported in any sort of capacity with this monitor given it's a League of Legends branded monitor when the game itself doesn't actually support HDR altogether. But it might be useful for those people playing other games or for example those people who have a console. On that note, if you have an Xbox you'll be pleased to know that you can run 1440p natively at 120Hz. But alas that's of course not supported on PlayStation and instead you'll be limited to Full HD at 120Hz and of course you can achieve the same on Xbox. Thankfully however AOC have included a 4K signal input and therefore you can have a simulated 4K via this monitor and as such if you're on PlayStation or Xbox you should be able to output 4K at 60Hz despite the monitor having only a native 1440p panel. Now with all of that in mind, how does this 27 IPS panel actually look like and can it be used for image editing or video grading? And that's for those people who are going to be playing let's say League of Legends and will also want to be having a colour accurate monitor. Well here when put on terms of its sRGB emulation mode through the OSD, I noted a gamut coverage of 92.4% and a gamut volume of 93.7%. You can see below how it compares to the sRGB standard and above whereby its average DLT sits as a stupendously low 1.04 and a maximum of 2.07. Quite frankly here it's very impressive. As for its tested contrast ratio it's a little bit lower than expected for a IPS panel at 1019 to 1 whereby its measured white point was also slightly bit lower than I expected at 5837 Kelvin rather than a 6504 Kelvin target but thankfully here its gamma curve is pretty much on point to the 2.2 standard. Note however that when you do run it in terms of its sRGB mode it does cap the brightness and limit it to 197 nits and here you won't have the ability to actually adjust the brightness which is a real shame. Now if you do want the ability to adjust your brightness you'll have to go on one of the other color modes and here in terms of its normal preset you can see that it's got a wide color gamut whereby the gamut coverage and the gamut volume both in, in terms of sRGB, Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 have been affected. As a result here it's no surprise that the average DLT in comparison to the sRGB standard has dropped to an average 3.31 and a maximum of 9.04. Here also the measured white point has also changed but more in terms of a positive factor because here you've got a 6576 Kelvin at 100% in comparison to the 6504K target which is very impressive. What isn't as good however is the fact that the gamut curve is now a lot off from the 2.2 level and therefore means that it does look a little bit different in comparison to the running in terms of its sRGB mode. Now of course its colour accuracy isn't of that much importance if you are a gamer and as a result here I would actually suggest running in terms of its normal, its user or warm modes and therefore allows you that control over its brightness. And this actually brings me on to its brightness levels and here the maximum HDR brightness was 463 nits which is certainly impressive and as for its maximum SDR brightness is still very high at 389 nits. It gets down all the way to 60 nits as well which is great and as for its SRV brightness as I did mention it does cap it and therefore you're limited to around 197 nits. As for the boost overdrive or the MBR20 mode it will limit it to 105 nits so something you might want to consider if you're running these modes. So moving swiftly on we get on to its brightness uniformity and at least on the tested panel it's not too bad whereby it's a little bit off in terms of the top side of the monitor. Now it is an IPS panel so it's no surprise that you do get a little bit of backlight bleed. I do think it's perfectly acceptable at least on the tested panel that I have because it's always going to differ. It's somewhat lottery but of course if you do want to eliminate all sorts of 
backlight bleed and you might want to go for a VA panel or a TN panel instead. So moving on to the monitor's OSD can be accessed through a physical joystick button found behind the monitor which I find quite convenient and you do also have a wired puck. Now here you do have a plethora of different options. I would suggest leaving game mode disabled because it skews around with the colours and here you do also have MBR where you've got 20 level increments to choose from. The only thing worth bearing in mind here is MBR will not simultaneously run with AMD FreeSync and or NVIDIA G-Sync. So if you do want that you'll have to disable it. Now I would suggest most people playing League of Legends to actually enable NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync because you'll get a tear-free gaming experience. Then the overdrive modes, the strong and weak and medium and off modes will be present in all different levels that you choose. However, the boost mode will only be applicable if you have NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync disabled. It's the same case as running MBR in terms of its maximum level. Now, as for low input lag mode, as I did mention before, it has a positive impact and you'll definitely want this to leave this enabled. And as for the quick switch LED, that's to do with the wired puck and it has a little LED ring around it, which you can disable. As for luminance, the brightness will very much depending on terms of your own ambient light conditions, but the rest of the settings over here, I'd leave them as as default. As for image setup, it's very simple. You've just got the HDR modes. This gives you a simulated HDR and SDR, so therefore it's not something I would suggest. But when you have an HDR signal, you'll also see the display HDR mode pop up over here, and that's the mode I would suggest running on if you want a better sort of color accuracy. Speaking of which here, you have got the color setup, and I would suggest most gamers, such as those people playing League of Legends, to run on the normal preset or potentially warm, depending on your own settings. But here you do also have the sRGB mode. The only thing worth bearing in mind, as I did mention before, is the sRGB mode does lock the brightness, which I just find quite baffling and quite a shame. So here you'll probably want to run on normal mode or user, for example, and then adjust the brightness to your heart's content. Now as for the audio, this does have DTS sound and I'd very much suggest running that enabled if you're using the built-in speakers that is and they're actually pretty good. You've got two 5 watt speakers and here with the game EQ presets I think it actually does a pretty good job. Now you would want to disable true volume EHD because it does play around with certain the frequency and as for the boot sound yes you do have one which plays each time you switch on the monitor and I would very much suggest disabling that unless you want a rude awakening each time you switch on the monitor. Now you do also have a 3.5 millimeter jack behind the monitor as well which can be useful if you want to plug in your headphones directly and of course I would always suggest a set of bookshelf speakers, DAC or a set of headphones or a headset. Now you have also got light FX. Now you've got a plethora of different options over here to choose from, from the different modes and to the different patterns. You'll be able to see that the different level of RGB colors that you've got available both underneath as in towards the stand and at the back of the monitor are really nice. I think it's actually one of the better looking RGB monitors out there on the market. Suffice to say, I actually don't like using any RGB lights on my monitor, and it seems like the majority of you would also agree with me in this respect. I do think it's kind of pointless, but it's a nice little party trick, or something that might differentiate itself from other monitors out there on the market. Nevertheless, it's there for you to use if you so wish. Now with the OSC section out of the way, I should just reiterate that this monitor has League of Legends branding all over it. And even though I'm not a League player myself, I can certainly appreciate the style of it. And here you've got a black and yellow type of finish which also stems towards the bottom bezel as well and towards the rear. Now you do have those RGB lights which I did previously reference, you can disable them if you don't want to use them, but they're actually quite cool and stylish, at least in my opinion, and that's from, from someone who actually hates RGB lights on a monitor. Now as for the stand itself, it's very ergonomic. I absolutely love it because it provides height, tilt, pivot and swivel adjustments, meaning you can find the right sort of ergonomics for you at your desk. You can of course replace the stand if you want via Visa compatible stand. Elsewhere, the monitor does have a three-side borderless design, which means it'll take up less space on your desk and or fit with a multi-monitor setup. So with all of that in mind, it brings me on to my verdict. And frankly, across the board, the AOC Aegon AG275QXL is a pretty competent monitor. If you like the styling of it, then it certainly is going to be appealing to you in terms of a gaming perspective and in terms of the overall colour accuracy, at least bearing in mind the limitations that I've mentioned throughout this review. If you don't care about the styling or even if you're not a league player, then you might want to look at alternatives from BenQ and Acer, which pretty much offer the same sort of performance, if not a little bit better because they don't have locked sRGB brightness and they come in at a lot cheaper price. And in fact, at the time of filming, the BenQ monitor is almost half the price of this AOC monitor which is absolutely stupidly good value for money. Now 
if you do want my recommendation for a League of Legends player, then you might also want to look at an alternative from AOC. There's a monitor that runs 1440p but has a VA panel instead, and this monitor will offer you far superior contrast ratio, which actually might be pretty good to see your characters in comparison to the map behind it, and therefore give you a little bit more of that contrast. Better still, you'll have no sort of IPS bleed to worry about either if you're going in darker scenes or using the monitor for a variety of different purposes. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say over here is that there's some alternatives that you might want to consider. And they'll be all down in the description below for your consideration. Now, if you've liked this independent detailed review and want to see more from myself, definitely do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification. It certainly does help and makes the channel grow at a much faster rate. If you have done that already, I just want to thank you in advance. As such, I've been Totally Dubs and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.